How's those uh, Clifton Strengths exercises going? Pretty good? Any complaints? Yeah. You said about the codes already for Clifton? Yeah. It didn't come directly from me. Yeah. All right, so we're talking about this week, business ethics and corporate social responsibility. <coughs> Who here think they they are quite ethical? Define ethical. Well, you define it. What do you think ethics is? Um, based on what we're talking about, I assume it's like the manner, how you conduct business. So manner, maybe sort of action. All right, let's give a couple examples. Keeping the hundred dollar bill. Who, who here is keeping the hundred dollar bill? <clears throat> Be honest, right? Can't keep it. Why? You got what's your reason, your rationale? So, but <clears throat> you're like, well, if it didn't want it, the universe wanted it to happen, why did it happen? Everything happens for a reason. Was it predetermined? It's this, all this predetermined. You're here because no matter what you would have did, left or right in life, you still would be here regardless. You have no control over this. Did we see the dollar bill and the other dollar bill come off the person? Yeah, you saw it. You saw it fall out the pocket. Fall out the pocket? I didn't see that. I keep it. Like, I did see that, and then I was like, okay, this fall into that person. So there's an if, and, and a but in your rationale. Yeah, that, that, that's the, immediately what I saw after what I heard her say. Okay. Who else uh, here is keeping the hundred dollars? Who is gonna let the person know in return? Why? <coughs> What's your rationale? What's your reason? Yeah. What do you want to do? Do unto others the gold or Right? Okay, go to roll. Yes. What if you like really need to go to one hundred bucks? Like what if it was like for something important or something like you were already planning on spending it on? Okay, so you're saying it's con context. So would you if you really needed it? Yeah, yeah, 
Because I think the other person probably needs it more. The person? He was the person who dropped it. Oh, the person who dropped it. Okay, but what if the other person is struggling? The other person is like, man, I haven't eaten all day. I'm hungry, I got no money. My bank account's in a mess. Hmm? I can get a job. Yeah, I can get a job, and but I gotta eat for that. Maybe that's just how they roll. There's a bunch of assumptions made, but the question is, what do you do? Right? Not about like what we idealistically think, information we actually can't get. Information we get is, hey, $100 is bad. What's in your control? Right? All right, different scenario. Is it okay to steal? Well, Ever? Really no. No, 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 not law. We'll get to legal. I'm not talking about the law yet. We're talking about ethical minds. Yeah, we're just talking about ethics. Like your personal ethics. Is it okay to steal? Yes or no? Hmm? <coughs> Ever? Yes. Yes? I agree with that. <laughs> okay, why do you say yes? Well, he said if it's okay to steal ever, there's situations where uh, stealing is the lesser evil. Say this once again, you said situational or the context in which I stole. Give me some example where it's okay to steal. All right, we'll come back to you. Yeah. I think it is if you're like, an example would be like if you're starving and someone steals from like a big corporation like Walmart. And Maybe not, right? But it is in that situation. Well, it's okay to steal from the rich. Yeah. What basically, right? <laughs> but don't steal from the poor because that's yeah. that, that's a different type of stealing, <laughs> right? <guess. laughs> we changed the definition. Is that you guys? You gonna say something? Somebody. Steal from the rich. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, I honestly think like the. Like you saw someone drop a hundred dollar bill out of their pocket and you cut that to their throat. If you watch, watch that. Oh, you're saying that would constitute that still? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because you saw who it belongs to. Yeah. Right. It so wasn't just a hundred dollars, and nobody could ever know who it is. Um. Anybody else? It's okay to steal. Depends. All right, who would steal if you had a young child and no money, no support, no nothing, and your baby's hungry and you gotta feed them? Who's still? Who's not still? And you just say, I'll just suffer the consequences with the innocent baby. Yeah. Working your way up by definition is kind of a universal thing. Everybody, everybody can do it. Everybody can do it. Everyone can. I believe that. I believe everyone can. But I don't believe everyone does. And if you have, if you don't do it the way you would like to do it, yeah. then it wouldn't be good. Okay. You gonna say something? Back
See, and, and this is what we get to, but you know, we all have to understand the difference between morals, ethics, <coughs> and uh, law, right? So I'm asking you about actions you would take in a situation. And really the answers you guys gave me, um, they're different. It's like, hey, they, they uh, are called to my morality, my perception, my idea of right and wrong. Like my idea of what's right and wrong is different than everybody. So there may be context, and it's all really predispositions on how we were brought up. If I actually like, hey, why do you believe what I believe? Yeah, my family. Maybe, maybe not, right? You say, okay, <clears throat> there's a lot of laws you may not you agree with capital punishment, you know, the death penalty. Do you agree with immigration laws? Do you agree with this? Do you agree that people should just, minimum wage should be whatever it is? Do you agree with that? So the example would be, do you agree that people, if you run a business and by law, legally, all you do is meet the federal minimum wage law or state. And you're like, well, that's all I should pay them. Do you think that's right or wrong? Well, I lost this. This is what I think you should get paid. Or you'd be like, hey, there might be some other stuff I should consider. What do you think? Minimum wage. Enforceable, right? 
Are they moral? Are they ethical? Who knows? Should they give you a, uh, should they boot your car after three tickets? Should they give you a hundred dollar ticket for uh, skipping a real life? hundred dollars. Right? So think about it. Yeah, it's a million laws in the book. We're the most litigious country on planet Earth. There's a law for a law. But is it ethical, is it moral? I mean, that's a whole different subject, right? Morals, we said, are ideas. I'm Roman Catholic. I'm Buddhist. I'm atheist. I'm, I'm this. I believe in this. I believe in this. I believe in this. Right? Ideas, concepts in our head about right and wrong. What we think is right. Ethical would be sort of... Um, set of rules to dictate action, to sort of like guide you to action, right? So maybe at this situation when we talked about the $100 bill, you'd be like, well, I've thought about things like this. If this were to happen, it really depends on this, this, and this. So you, get some, you may have some rules in place, right? You'd be like, well, in this situation, here are my rules. This is what I'll bend on, and this is what I'm not. I'll still keep my morals, because I think maybe the moral principles, um, maybe they're fluid, depending on the context. But your ethics are really like what guides you to make action, or actually guides you to do something. Sometimes you don't do what, you, you don't do what you're, uh, you may have moral behavior, and that's people who really live out their morality, which is rare. Right? A lot of us are hypocritical in many ways every day. Ethics is more like a set of rules you make or a company makes, which we'll discuss, to guide you to a certain action. Right? They'll guide you to do something. If you do it violating those ethics, you could be fired or something. You know, like, or a question, like why you made a certain decision, but you have an ethical conduct, standard of conduct, a rule book, whatever. Think of Dominican, right? They have a handbook for Dominican, and it has ethical conduct. Now, some of it may not be against the law. It's like, okay, that's cool. It's not legal. But this is kind of what we expect you to act on, to behave. We want to shape your behavior here. So companies have codes of conduct, right? Ethical rule books, handouts, handbooks, all these different things. We'll discuss that along with corporate social responsibility. Now, before we get into it, what do we think corporate social responsibility is? And what's the purpose of it? Yes. Corporate social responsibility is the, um, well, the responsibility of corporations to service their communities and the world, like the environment. So, like stakeholders is kind of what you're saying. Yeah, just okay. the stakeholders, which isn't just necessarily their shareholders, but people who rely on their products or people who live where they're offices are, stuff like that. Yeah, employees who work for the company, mm -hmm. customers, investors, shareholders, the neighborhood, the place where they do business in, yeah. right? where the government thing, all of that stuff. What's the point, why do they need that? And it, like, is that beneficial to a company? Like, hey, we spend 50 billion on corporate social Is there a benefit to that? No. Yeah, it does help their image and help them do good. Think of this, a corporation, how we, just as we perceive a person, right? Someone would describe you, and they're like, oh man, really nice guy, smart. Very moral. Same is viewed towards corporations because we view Apple as one thing. We view Coca-Cola as one thing, right? So if it happens to be 
bad news about their practices, their behavior, what they do, that's gonna shape how we view those things, right? And that's gonna give us a new image of that man. I don't really support that no more. That violates my morals, violates my ethics. They're not getting no more of my money. Yeah. I don't roll with that company. Should Apple pay the people in Shenzhen, China, on the factories, the same amount that they pay the people that work in Cupertino, California, that work for Apple? They pay the same people producing the actual physical iPhone that you have in your pockets, the same. They want to. Do you think they should? Should they? Who thinks they should? Why? It um, feels like it's basic and everybody seems fair. So it's fair to pay the same wage in China versus here. Well, maybe not, I guess, because living expenses are different. saying maybe it's, you know, this is the point for us to think a little bit more about this. Never really a, a black and white answer to this stuff, you know, and that's why we have these subjects to talk about constantly. Like this, none of this stuff is black and white. Right? All businesses are completely different things. They all get different ethics and morals. Some of them get none because we care about the profit, right? And a lot of them we invest in. And so when they say, hey, what is how does the CEO or the board of directors make the final decision for a public company? They're beholden to you. You own stock shares. You're like, hey, Apple, do not go pay them in China $30 an hour. Don't do that. Why? The stock is going to go down. Because my mom and my dad own a thousand stocks. They're going to pay for my college from there. They're going to buy me a new car. They're going to buy me a house. They're going to buy us a a second house somewhere, somewhere in Florida. It's gonna change my life, by your decision. Now it makes people think, right? Once again, people have changed their mind with money versus just their ideas of what's right and wrong. Right, well, when money's involved, people tend to change their ideas. So they say, hey, we're beholden to the shareholders. Shareholders say, we don't like that. You say, well, that's wrong. You should still do that, Apple. Be nice thing to do. Somebody said it doesn't make sense. China has a totally different culture, language, government. It's not the same, right? So you're trying to equate what's good here and traject it over to a totally different foreign country where everything's completely different. You're trying to impose your views onto other people, right? It's almost like you want to force their religious beliefs to somebody else. We're different, right? We live different. So this is the point, but the thing is, it is an image. <clears throat> it big time is an image because we perceive the company as one thing, as a person. You perceive the company as a person versus trustworthy, right? great product, great service, uh, honest company. They do great. They're helping save the world, save the planet, all these different things. All right, so set of beliefs about right and wrong, good and bad, universal ethical standards, norms that apply to people across many situations, <clears throat> which just means just consensus, right? Like I asked you guys in 95% of the class, answers a certain way, we're like, okay, well that's pretty universal, right? Like you're one or two people that go against you, right? In business ethics, application of right and wrong, good and bad in the business setting. Right, so I mean, it's, it's tricky. Money's involved, right? Do you try to scam somebody and get some more money if you think you can, right? Do you try to be cheap and not pay people? Is that just, is that fair, right? So this stuff is very fluid. <clears throat> and ethical dilemmas, decisions that involve a conflict of values. And this stuff happens every day. It's not just business. I mean, think of all this. We have a 
comic books every day about things like how we treat how much crap we talk about in church, what we say in public versus what we say in private. Two different things, right? All this stuff really uh, goes deep down into the psyche. Carl Jung, who was, anyone know Sigmund Freud in here? Freud and Jung? Okay. Carl Jung, who was a colleague of Freud, talks about the shadow, that we all wear shadows. We all wear shadows. Some of us got multiple shadows, right? The part of us that we show in public, right? Yeah, I mean, it could be a multitude, but typically it's just, it's just one. It's just who you really are deep down that most people don't know, right? And this goes to this, like, hey, we always have that approach. That thing in us comes out depending on the context, right? Yeah, situation. Like this, and yeah, I probably would do this, right? Uh, so the situation, it changes. All right, universal ethical standards, trustworthy, right? Be honest, don't deceive, cheat, steal, do what you say you'll do, right? Respectful, treat others how you like to be treated, to go over the rules. <clears throat> Actually, there's a, a new one uh, in psychology to talk about called the Plecker Rule, how to go just treat people um, not how you want to be. Um, all right, be considerate, be tolerant of difference, responsible, persevere, be controlled and self-discipline, be accountable for your choices, which kind of what you guys talked about, right? Or say, you say, maybe that's a very strong point for you, right? Be accountable to your actions. Don't steal under no circumstances. If you didn't know you had money to have kids, why did you have kids, right? No ifs, ands. Fair, provide equal opportunity, be open-minded, don't take advantage of others, caring, be kind, compassionate, express gratitude, citizenship, contribute to the community, protect the environment, cooperate whenever needed. Now these are important, because <coughs> if you met somebody with these characteristics, you'd be like, this is a great person. If you know somebody with these characteristics, family member, you'd be like, man, that person's trustworthy, I can trust them no matter what, who is it? A million dollars. Will value that person because that's an awesome person. Right? Okay? Like a person who's very considerate, respectful, right? A person who's responsible, you're gonna value that person. You know people like that, you know who you're gonna call in certain situations. A person who's fair, somebody who's kind, compassionate, express gratitude, not harsh. And then probably this, contribute to the community. A person who say, I don't want all the money in the world, that's not what I'm here for, that's not important. I just want to help you, right? cooperate with them, be with them. So if a company has these uh, perceptions about them, this is going to give them great, great, great value. And when we say it's not about cost, it's not about price, it's always about value. Value is what actually makes you pay for what you pay for that thing. Right? So really, you pay the cost doesn't matter. If the value is not met, I'm not buying it. So thinking that that value will make you pay a hundred dollars, probably more than what you know you should pay for those shoes. Just because you value you, right? Right? The value of the company, what it brings, how the product makes you feel, all that stuff. That's extremely important. And so this is how you create value from an ethical point of view. All right, uh, legal. Going into the ethical category, producing high quality products, right? Rewarding integrity, leading by example, treating employees fairly, contributing to the community, respecting the environment, unethical, right? Promoting unhealthy food. So this is where legality cross sections with ethical and unethical behavior. So promoting unhealthy food with inadequate information about the risks, right? You could say, well, the law can intervene because you're making people sick here lying about the risk of that time. <clears throat> uh, producing products that you know will break before their time, paying 
non-living wages to work, which we talked about with wages, non-living. In fact, oh, but that's the that's the minimum wage. It's like minimum wage where? It's like that's the federal minimum wage. You like in San? That's gonna work in San Francisco? It's like no, it don't. Right? We know that different economies depend on where you go here in Chicago. Right? I live in the Gold Coast. It's extremely expensive. Extremely, it's, it's ridiculous. Right? Is it worth it? But if you don't make a certain amount of money, you're going to struggle. Now, if you say, well, I'm, they pay me minimum wage, and now I need to go live all the way in Inglewood. He's like, man, I don't want to live over there, right? I don't want to live over there. You should have a choice. And you don't have a choice. Now you shape somebody's life by shaping their environment. Because we say environment is the most important thing. You actually change their life, maybe change their future. Because now you're being cheapened and paid for because of the law. The law says it's minimum wage. If you don't take into context where people live, a living wage, and you live there, of what you make. You make a job. You can't. It means you have a struggle. All right. Uh, illegal, where cross sections were ethical, right? Providing rock bottom prices only to distributors in this underserved areas. Collaborating with other clinics to guarantee low prices in low income counties, right? Collusion, we can call that. And here where it's illegal con <coughs> intersects with unethical embezzling money, right? These are just all completely bad. Engaging in sexual harassment, practicing collusion with competitors, encouraging fraudulent, uh, fraudulent accounting. Right? Tax evasion for your corporation. You're like, hey, okay. Uh, insider trading. Who knows what insider trading is? Where you know like the clock is going to go up or down, but this will be more serious Yeah, right? And you say, hey, information's not really shared to the public just yet. We got it quick about some actions that are going to happen that's going to tank the stock. So have, let me hurry up and get out before the other 50 million investors know about it. It's going to crash it lower and make us lose money. I don't want to lose money. Let me get out first. It's like a win. Right? A lot of people get caught with this, big time. A lot of politicians get caught with this because they get the information early too. Um, practicing collusion with competitors, like what's an example of that? Basically, it'd be like, hey, McDonald's and Burger King get together, right? The CEOs start talking to managers and say, hey, you know what? We're going to lower our prices so low so that we can put money to have a McDonald's. Right? We're going to change up the menu. We're going to work together so we can get rid of Taco Bell. Right? So they essentially want to eliminate competitors so they can get together, which would be illegal and unnecessary. Right there, coalition against other businesses. Yeah, right. So you could go around, you could circumvent and say, like, okay, well, once they're out, let's go work together. I'll get 50% of the money. Right. Um, anybody start this one, the chapter four? Anybody do that one? Um, all right, any questions so far? The last one you
had to start somewhere. You know, collusion is kind of hard legally to apply a law to. So normally it's hard to give the information of how things happen. Um, it's hard to prove. Right? It's hard to prove. It's like, hey, of course people communicate. Of course we talk about competitive prices. Right? We're in the same market. We go to the same seminars as CEOs or we're in the same industry. It's hard. So I don't know when it's recent, <clears throat> but you can think of, uh, I think you mentioned more like standard oil, right? With Rockefeller, I mean, I think that's a good one. Uh, you basically collude with smaller um, oil refineries, things like that, offer them a ridiculous price of what you're gonna pay for it, just to eliminate other people in the market, right? So even colluding could be like, you make a ton of money. I mean, you could say colluding would be really great, but if you say like, hey, Amazon wants to buy out all of these new companies that potentially could compete against them and do so by offering them way more money than what the companies are actually worth and do it very quickly just so it's not seen as an right? Which is often a practice with these large corporations. Yeah, business ethics um, <laughs> is a tricky one because in reality, people, you say, hey, I want to make money first. I'll do all the good stuff later, right? I mean, how are you going to do all this good stuff if your company doesn't even have the money to even start making a profit to do business, right? Which is sort of, um, anyone ever heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Yeah. The pyramid, right? It's like, yeah, you start at the bottom and eventually you move up and you start doing good, right? Yeah, no one's just coming out the gate just be extremely ethical or moral because in business is so great. I don't know if you could be completely, I mean, if you're going to do that, start a church or a nonprofit. You know, if those are, if you're guided just strictly by some, you know, moral character or something that you don't waver on or don't have a real philosophy that is contextual, that yeah, do a nonprofit or do a church or something, right? But if you're engaging in business, <clears throat> for profit business practices, you have to negotiate, right? You may think people are ripping you off, so you gotta be a fighter as well as that. And a lot of times, but there are a lot of times that may overstep your perceived notions of ethics and morality. Sometimes it's tough. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's extremely hard. Um, <clears throat> because also, too, you have to think of, you may want to do good, but you may want to do good in some way later down the road, and the only way to get there is kind of what you do now, right? So if you don't play the rules by what you set for yourself now, the later will never happen. You'll never make the money to come back. All right, code of ethics, formal written document that defines the ethical standards of an organization, right? Give employees the information required to make ethical decisions across the range of situations. When you go work at your jobs in the future, they're gonna be code of ethics. And it may say all types of things. It may say like, hey, we don't really promote like uh, workplace dating. dating somebody at the workplace, you'd be fired. You, you violated our code of ethics, right? Don't some places have like a, like a file or like a form to fill out if you enter a recognition with a company? Yeah, I mean, every company does it differently, you know? But these are things that can happen. Um, steps or implementation of code of ethics. So 
then when you start your own companies, what are going to be your code of ethics? Is it going to be based off just all your moral precepts? Are you going to change them a little bit depending on the market or what you're selling, what your service is? Uh, so get executive buy-in and commitment to follow through. Establish expectations for ethical behavior at all levels of the organization, not just one level. Integrate ethics into mandatory staff training. <clears throat> so when you get your jobs, you're gonna take some training, you're gonna watch some videos, you're gonna go to some gatherings, and they're gonna talk about all these things, about what to do, what not to do in a certain situation. And things are always um, fluid. Think if you go to a retail location and you want to return something, right? Even though it may be black and white, you're like, hey, you're really past the amount of days to return this thing. You've been a customer with us for X amount of time. We'll let you get your money back. Somebody shows up 10 minutes later, it's their first time. Like, nah, this person has been a customer here. It's their first time. Let's not return, let's not give them their money back, even though it's the same exact situation, right? So this happens all the time, even when you go shopping. Do this. Uh, ensure that the ethics code is global and local in scope. Build and maintain a clear trusted reporting structure for ethical concerns and violations. Establish protection for whistleblowers, right? Maybe, you know, someone was a snitch in the organization. You might be good for it, the higher up. You want to make sure that they're not exposed because they're actually uh, helping you out as an organization. All right, you can barely see this one, but let's see if we can read this one on. All right, spectrum of social responsibility on the less responsible side, no contribution. Some businesses do not recognize an obligation to society and do only what's legally required. Who believes in that? Who thinks like, man, just do what's legally required. I don't think you need to do anything more than that. And we say, well, this takes money. All of this costs money. The decisions you make, whether how moral, ethical you are, cost money. Or a proactive contribution on the far side. Some businesses choose to integrate social responsibility into their strategic plans, contributing as part of their business goals. So who here is going to be an entrepreneur who's starting a business? Okay. Are you thinking about social responsibility from the start, or is that something Way down the line. That's something that's like 10 years from when we start a business. Okay. So it's not proactive, it's just basically just yeah. maybe in the middle. See what we gotta do, get it done, and then potentially we start helping our employees and doing that for that if we go into the community. Okay. So what by what ethical measures you're gonna take for your business? Is it all profit at the beginning? Or just treating people fairly and just too? There's really what's going to benefit, um, say, you per se. You think if you're paying a fair wage to your employees at the beginning? Think about it. We'll come back. Uh, yeah, what were you going to say? Going into being a landlord, I guess. Yeah, Our business, man. <laughs> but very proud. Anybody else? 
All right, we talked about stakeholders, right? Groups that have a stake in the performance and actions of an organization. It could be the neighborhood, right? The neighborhood has a stake, um, which that doesn't exist, right? Because there are people coming in and out, and they have an impact on what's going on in the neighborhood. So the neighborhood could be a stakeholder. The employees could be a stakeholder, right? Managers, uh, the shareholders, uh, maybe even the government. Jobs, cus uh, employees, customers, investors, community contributing to society. Things like that. <clears throat> Talked about plan obsolescence. I got my what iPhone 12 Pro or something, right? I may have. So there's plan obsolescence, right? Just think about that. If you're making a product, you're like, hey, I want to make some great electronic product. Okay, great. Like, you can get some good engineers, right? Yeah. Well, the quality of the product, you want people to own that product forever? Like, no. Why? You want them to buy more stuff. Forever. You want them to buy it over again. And some people are like, well, we make cheap products, but we don't care about return on That's not what we're doing business. Yes, it's crappy, we know it's gonna break, we already did the test, it doesn't last as long. Right, so there's plant obsolescence for many things. Uh, think of the, uh, um, the auto warranty. Like, why does it only last X amount of miles? Right, because they already tested it. They know it only gonna last X amount of miles, that's why they give you the warranty. Uh, so delivered designing products that fail in order to shorten the time between consumer purchases. <clears throat> Some other ones with responsibilities for investors. Starbase Oxley was supposed to pass uh, after like Enron and all those things, set high ethical, ethical standards for public corporations and accounting firms. Basically, these big financial firms were fudging the numbers and their accounting <coughs> to show that they were way more profitable than what they actually real tricky accounting to show that you don't have as many liabilities as you actually do. And provisions to limit conflict of interest issues to require financial officers and CEOs to certify the validity of financial statements. So basically it puts the CEO on, on the line and the financial officer. Like you vouch for what's being stated here. That'll make people sort of not to do such things. What is a conflict of interest? What is a conflict of interest? A conflict of interest happens when, one, when what's best for one person to be the same as what's best for the other. That they mutually. Oh, it can also be that. Uh, like, if you have the power to do something to benefit yourself, you probably shouldn't be put on a project where you could uh, harm, harm it by being self-serving. Okay. Potentially. Anybody else? Think of this, like, anything that two parties do that can affect a third party. I know you didn't allow the other school. 
students in the class to do this. Can I do this and get an A? How do you think the other students would do it? Conflict of interest, right? Like, hey, a third party are the rest of the students. You and me collude together. So that'd be a conflict of interest. Basically, like it's harming a third party, really two parties doing something. Uh, corporate philanthropy, business donations to nonprofit groups. This stuff is excellent. So when I started my business, um, started my business, I knew I wanted to do good things. I knew I needed money in order to do it. Right? I knew I needed some for profit. And so after I started making uh, money on the for-profit side, I was doing work in South Africa and I started my foundation there, right, to help some really, really impoverished people, right? not American probably, but all different um, And so what I started doing was taking percentage of what I was making for-profit, putting it directly to my nonprofit. So I was like, absolutely, I'm just gonna take this money to give. Because what happened is at the beginning, made money, felt great, bought nice, cool stuff, wonderful, cool toys, motorcycles, Ferrari, uh, all types of crazy stuff, right? And after that wore off, because it will wear off, right? That's just life experience, I have to do all this stuff. And then um, I was like, man, there's still people struggling. I know what it's like to struggle. I know what it's like to be poor, right? I know what it's like to kind of suffer and some stuff. And so I, was, I changed my mode of thinking. And so my values um, kind of guided more towards giving away, trying to be like, man, how good of a giver do you have to be? And I'm decent at making money, I'm good at earning, but how good of a giver I can be to actually help change people's lives and give them out of money. And that's part of Maslow's too, right? You guys may say, hey, you're towards the bottom of the pyramid right now. Professor Ross, I haven't made the money. So what you do, great for you. I want to make some money. And I want to buy condo, Audi, right? Travel around the world and do all this stuff. And you should. You should do all of it. You should do all of it and even more. But at the same time, you should be thinking about with that, with that money, can you be affecting other people's lives in a better way? To me, which is way worth more than money. Because money is value in the United States or everywhere else. But other people around the world is not the same, right? So you said the world's a big place and the rules aren't the same. And so but corporate philanthropy, giving business donations to nonprofit groups. Uh, some companies do this, they choose not to start their own uh, philanthropic organizations and they just give, right? They'll give to the Red Cross. For each dollar that you spend here, we will give three cents to the Red Cross or blood donation drive, right? You go to pay at 7-Eleven, hey, would you like to give um, three cents to this cause that hey, right now? Or you say, yeah, I'll do that. Cause-related marketing, marketing partnerships between businesses and nonprofit organizations. This is all good for the for-profit. When we say it's about image, how do, uh, how does society perceive you? So, yeah, you might, hey, Professor Ross, Coca-Cola spent 30 billion on philanthropy. Isn't that bad? Didn't they lose money? Like, no. Actually, they look at the philanthropy and said, people knowing that they're doing this good stuff made them add 300 billion. I'm making up numbers here. It made them add 50 billion to the for-profit side. Like, no, interesting. So they're up 20 billion. So this perception of doing good, it could be real, it could be, it could be real, but it could be fake or it could be whatever, it doesn't matter what it is. The point is that it's just perception of what the consumer sees. And so cause-related marketing, we see this all the time, right? We're gonna you know, plant trees in the rainforest, right? Deep, there's been a lot of deforestation in the Amazon, right? We're gonna go down there and donate 50,000 trees. 
wonderful. You are in the sales and environment, you're really gonna like that. You're really gonna promote that company even more. And just, uh, we talked about this, there's a contribution to the community through the actions of the business itself, rather than just donations of money and time. <coughs> So you can't donate money and put time, but just really your actions are what dictate your corporate responsibility. Uh, some practices, sustainable development. I know you guys talked about some companies who focus on sustainability, right? To meet the needs of current generations without harming the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Uh, what's some examples? Like what's some companies you think focus on sustainability? And that's like a kind of a big thing with how they make their profit. So like people buy their profit. Apple. Apple. In what way? They try to make their product not changing to what society how society changes today. As well as work on like the environment stuff that they try to do for the environment. They try to work on global warming. Okay, so they engage in practices of good things around them. Uh, what else? Like name some products that actually you think are you're like, oh, this will help the planet. This, this is sustainable. What's a big car manufacturer? Tesla, Tesla right? You guys, oh, you should buy electric. Why? solar on your roof, right? all these different things. Reduce carbon footprint emitted by firms, and then we have green marketing, development, promoting environmentally sound products and practices to gain competitive advantage. And that's that big one. Here's it's to gain a competitive advantage. So companies are competing in excess too. Not only are they competing with the actual products they build, but they're competing on their green market. Like they're competing about the good stuff that they do for the environment or their sustainability, right? Who, he, whoever promotes the best good stuff gets more money. Uh, bribery and corruption, challenging issues faced by companies and individuals. Where would this take, where would this, you would have issues with, like say, um, like in what kind of activities of business do you have issues with this? Where could it take place? Where does it take place? Social media. Yeah, it could be social media. So they have a video of an employee or someone that just works for the company doing something that's all. Oh yeah, yeah. Blackmail, okay. you know, all sorts of things. But think of this. We say, hey, we got to all get out more on ethical values. Are you speaking only from the United States? Now you're like, hey, I want to go do business in such and such country. There's extortion clauses. Yeah, all of the clauses. Because we'll say our known older brand in the Chicago that refused to uh, give the land right to a Burger King. I mean, Chicago, this happens all the time. I, I hate to say it, Chicago is the most politically corrupt city probably in the entire country. And there's not there's nothing like this in like town and all things. Not, you know why you got potholes? Why do we got so many potholes? Why is there so much construction? Why is the traffic so bad? Why? Yes. We purposely are slow. Yes. Hurt me so why? So that we can keep giving my cousin a job and my uncle a job. Right? To be donated to the campaign. Or the mayor is his cousin. Right? Or the alderman is his dad. Like, oh, all ten million. 
billion of us in the greater metropolitan area are gonna suffer because of that? Yeah, you do. We're not gonna give you good cement. There's some cement that lasts. Oh, you're gonna put down some more cheap one that's gonna, once the, the freeze stalls out again from a bad winter, you're gonna get more power than that good one. Okay, so that's one of the things too, but not to get off topic. That's political corruption working with companies. Um, but yes, so you say, hey, I have a great idea. I'm doing real estate, right? I'm investing, I'm buying properties. And you're like, hey, guess what? Say, hey, before you do this, um, that little money, that loan you got from the bank, you got to have to give my cousin like 25% of this and he has another one. Um, because he's trying to move these other people out of this place and kick them out so they can use their money they can. And it's that kind of corrupt or bribery. Like, this is how we do business here. Take it or leave it. Right? Most likely you'll take So the point is, different places do things differently. If you don't want to come against those sorts of things, then don't do business in those places. But if you think that all these large corporations who do business in these places don't contribute to that, that is not true. Right? Whenever you, yes? I was gonna ask, like, personal question. If you're willing to answer it, would you ever run into any type of wealth? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and um, lots of places you run into them. Um, so a way that I've kind of handled that sort of thing is uh, typically I have friends who are high power lawyers or government officials. They used to work for the United Nations. So I have people who typically who work for government or intergovernmental organizations. And those people kind of know not to do that. Right? Like, don't make me compromise my character to do bad stuff to you. Because I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do bad stuff. That's not how it's going to work out. Um, but you see the game you have to play. You kind of like, well, you do have to use your power and your muscle to not do bad stuff, right? So you're like, hey, is that an ethical, Professor Ross, is that an unethical moment? Are you using UN officials or government officials to make sure that people don't try to force unethical behavior on you? Could be, right? Point is, this kind of stuff is black and white, gray, right? Um, companies establish codes of conduct for vendors by setting clear policies. Think of, um, you know, one of the day would argue the unethical practices that people can't compete against Walmart because Walmart essentially threatens the suppliers. Right? You can't beat Walmart with the prices. You just can't if you're another big box retailer. With the specific items they sell with the prices, they're everyday low value. Because Walmart threatens the suppliers and they say, we don't we won't do business with you if you don't give it to us at this price. And then the supplier said, well, you're Walmart. Definitely don't want to lose all that business. We give you what you want. Make sure you don't also leave. also don't work with our competitors. Don't sell them the same stuff for this price. Okay, well, how are they going to compete? They're not going to compete. So that's kind of how it works. But you know, once again, you ask the consumer, you're like, hey, do you want it to change? Like, no, I want my. Why would I want to pay more? It was all this big circumventing of stuff, right? We're all kind of compromised into the stuff in some way. But yeah, uh, here you want to set universal standards and universal enforcement to ensure the benefits of globalization are not gained at the expense of vulnerable people. 
right, you can do a social audit, evaluation of how well a firm is meeting its ethics and responsibility goals. Um, so think of this, and this may happen in the future, right? China has social credit, which means depending on the behavior and actions of the people that live there, you'll have something like a credit score. So it's either like you get good credit or based on what you do, based on the stuff you post on social media, your behavior on social media, based on the stuff you do out in public, right? Maybe they're monitoring you, looking at things you do, things you come out, maybe your education, your level of education, maybe your level of income, maybe your ethnic group, right? There's social, some sort of uh, social score. And who knows, that might happen here in the United States, maybe in the next like 10 to 15 credit score to a social score, like how valuable is this person based on all the stuff that makes up who they are. But I just brought that up just so we can kind of relate to being like social auditing, right? Evaluating how well a firm is meeting its ethics and social responsibility goals. Some of you might be forced to have some sort of uh, social audit. Uh, success is measured by evaluating traditional financial indicators and social responsibility uh, indicators which basically you're looking at all the financial statements and you're actually looking at what they do good around the world. Better government le legislation keeps companies motivated to self regulate. Um, all right, I think I'll end here with the lecture. All right, any questions? How do we know if, if like, it's good, like, I'm, I'm, I'm sure a lot, a lot of this controversy Distortion and stuff is kept out there throughout very people. How would how would uh, officials catch this? Like when so some of the companies try to look for it, it's their job. Well, okay, think of this, and that's why I said we're all so entrenched in it, right? This makes you look at the world a little differently. And if you're trying to be a business person, you really got to look at it differently. Does the government want this illegal stuff to stop? Yes or no? What do you guys say? Why not? There you go. Right? You're like, man, the highest echelons of the government, they don't want it to stop because money is compromised. Right? Money is compromised because the economy is compromised. Maybe you're running, having an office, you're like, I don't want the car, I want the car to be just good. Well, I'm in office, right? I'm gonna do all this great stuff. Or you like, hey, some of my family members, maybe work for the thing, or maybe I own stock in these companies, all right? Why do you want the stock to get less if you own the stock? Walmart, Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Apple, right? All these different things. <clears throat> and so we're all involved in some way. Let me think of, uh, Example here for Dominican University. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> An example you could use is the DU dollars, how they take them away if they're not completely used up, and the money goes to them directly to the, to the college and the board instead of the students. Absolutely. You make, well, hey, calculate X amount of thousands of students with those. 10, 15, 20 dollars that we've left on it. You made us a lot of money. What does that look like on the, on the, on the accounting side? What are you counting that as? Like what kind of contribution? We basically stole some money from the students, right? Okay. So yeah, there's, I mean, so there's all type of practices that um, we could relate to in all organizations, nonprofits. Think of this, this is a private, not-for-profit um, organization, right? Which means that not-for-profit, how do they make money? Let's think of the universities. Harvard, Stanford, Yale, yeah, right? We would say endowments. Who knows what endowments are? So you look up the endowment, somebody Google Harvard University endowment. It was, it was, 50, it was 50 million. Billion. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Good. Google it. I remember the correct chart, but I know the conversation. Yeah. Um, so in 
essence, a lot of things need to be done. Now, what used to happen with the public universities before you guys go, is before they used to do these, the government would subsidize and give the public universities, you know, UIC and things like that. It would give them uh, subsidies based on the number of students they get enrolled. Right? And so what they do, they just get money people to fill up all these seats. You know, this whole thing would be filled up in every, every class. And then they started to see that that was a bad practice because the schools started doing just really unethical practices if enrolling everybody. And then they switched. Now they say, well, we're only giving you subsidies based on the number of people that graduate. And then they made the argument that they're allowing people who shouldn't graduate. person worked hard to get an A, this person absolutely did nothing for college. Don't matter. Push them through the class. But to keep the dough. Right? So even in the university systems, this is an organization, you see all types of practices that eventually come down to the All right, I'll let you guys go. I'll see you on Thursday. <coughs>